All right, welcome again to Mainline Healthy Living. We are meeting again with Hina Sheth, our physical therapy expert from Rebalance PT. And we're talking today about low, well, we're talking about pregnancy and yep. some of the symptoms that can uh, be troubling people, you know, either while they're pregnant or postpartum. And we're talking specifically about low back pain, uh, uh, pubic symph symphysis pain, mm -hmm. correct? And yes. uh, there was one more there. Help me Sa out. Sacroiliac. Sacro pain. Sacroiliac. So that's what we're talking about. Say that 10 times <laughs> fast. I dare you. So, Hina, you've got some props with you uh, today, yes. and we're going to do some close up shots as you're talking about those. But, yep. but set the stage for us. Um, so, you know, I, I basically want to talk to anyone who's not just pregnant, but thinking about getting pregnant, mm -hmm. is pregnant, mm -hmm. or has recently delivered and is continuing to have low back pain, sacroiliac joint pain, or uh -huh. pubic symphysis there pain. There you go. See, she says it much better than <laughs> I do. <laughs> so, you know, 67% of all women that are pregnant and even postpartum will end up experiencing any of these symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it's basically the big terminology is pelvic girdle pain. Okay. So any of them, if they're experiencing this, I mean, that's a high number, 67%. Yeah, it sure is. And 17% will continue to have pain even after they've delivered. Right. So this is actually a really common problem that we see in our clinic all the time. And we have women just, you know, they, they try and tough it out after, during, they start experiencing symptoms in their first trimester. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they try and tough it out. And unfortunately, they're basically told from many healthcare practitioners that they see, oh, you just need to rest, you're doing too much. Or maybe take some Tylenol, maybe, you know, rest right and really you can't really <laughs> rest. <laughs> yeah i mean what woman especially if you already have children has time to rest I mean, you're right really and, and how restful is it when some <laughs> little being is like stomping on your bladder and exactly whatnot, so, you know. <laughs> exactly so um so basically it's a very common problem and I'm, i encourage women to seek treatment early because the earlier you can catch it actually the better the outcome mm -hmm. and um you know especially if you've actually had a history of any type of you know, low back pain, sacroiliac joint pain, or even pubic symphysis pain, um, and even hip pain. Let's just throw hip pain into that. Right. That if whole region. That yeah. whole region. If you've had pain um, and discomfort part of your history, then it's very likely that you're actually going to be experiencing pain as you get pregnant. I'm not going to say all, but. Right, but you know, there's massive rearrangement of things and yes. accommodation going on in the body. It just kind of makes sense. And one of the things I've always loved about the kind of work that you do is that just understanding the mechanics of your own body yeah. makes it easier to tolerate certain things, even if you can't necessarily totally change them. But I mean, from a psychology point of view, the unknown always makes us a little freaked out and anxious, right? Yeah. So if I can understand what my body's up to, right. well, I, I can work with that, you know? So. Yeah. So show us a little bit about what we're talking about here. I'm going to I'm going to switch cameras here and uh, so that we can both see you and see the model. Great. So basically what happens is, you know, a woman's body is changing dynamically. I mean, there's huge changes going on. So you're seeing a lot of postural changes, um, you know, that throws a lot of the body balance off. And there's a lot of hormonal changes that end up happening. There is a hormone called relaxin that's actually released and it peaks and surges in the first trimester. Okay. So basically what <clears throat> relaxin does, and this is a picture of the pelvis, okay? This is the pubic, sym pubic symphysis right up here in the front. And if you turn this around, this is the sacroiliac joint. So there's a okay. bone called the sacrum back here. Okay, this is your lumbar spine. Right. And this is your um, pelvic bone. Right. So this joint can become very painful. So it's where your spine attaches to your pelvis, basically. basically. yeah, where the spine attaches to the pelvis. But this joint can become very painful. And even the tailbone can become painful in mm -hmm. these women, um, as well as the pubic symphysis. But what ends up happening is you see this gray area right here. These are all the ligaments, mm -hmm. many of the ligaments that end up becoming very relaxed and loosened because of this hormonal change that ends up happening. And then on top of that, you have all these postural changes that happen. So you get a lot of strains and tensioning and um, you know just discomfort that ends up happening because these ligaments are really loose. Okay. And then on top of that, what ends up happening is your body is kind of going through this tug of war because it's trying to keep things together so you can still function. But at the same time, it's loosening as well. Right, to so, move around. Yeah. To move around. So the body doesn't know any different. It's just going to keep functioning. So whether you have pain or not, right. it's just going to keep going. Right. So there's different muscles that are basically tensioning, lengthening, becoming weak, ligaments that are becoming loosened and weak. And so that's why women end up having a lot of discomfort. Mm -hmm. Now, same thing in the front. You've got a lot of ligaments here, and not all of them are on here. 
but you have a lot of ligaments that go in through the front and you've got a lot of musculature that attaches to this pubic symphysis. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is this pelvis can actually twist and turn and move out and move in. There's a lot of movement that can happen through here. And then you've mm -hmm. got a baby right in the middle. Right. That's also probably pressing on different right, things exactly. and causing discomfort. So what women may not realize is that there is actually that physical therapy can actually improve this significantly as they are continuing to go through their second and third trimesters and even in their first trimester. Because if there is an alignment issue going on, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different techniques that we can use to actually improve the alignment of these osseous or bony structures mm -hmm. and to make it balanced again. There's a lot of things we can do to the muscles that are the ones that are um, tightening or becoming overly spasmed we can do hands-on treatment to get that to stop spasming. And then the weakness that's starting to develop, and some women may have heard of this, but it's called a diastasis recti. And if you haven't heard of it, what it is, is that a lot of the muscles, the abdominal muscles in the front are starting to stretch out, obviously, because mm -hmm. the baby is growing. Right. And as those muscles stretch out, they become very weak. Mm. And when that weakness happens, it actually takes support away from the low back. So right. actually the abdominal muscles, everyone's heard of a lot of core strengthening, but the core starts to become weak. Right. Now this is only one part of the core, the abdomen. Right. So there's a lot of other core structures um, that we, we might not have time to get into today, but all of those things we have to assess and find where the weakness is happening. And then we work on strengthening a lot of that up. Mm -hmm. So first comes obviously balancing out the bony structures then working on, on a lot of the soft tissue, and then balancing all the strength up and improving the stability of that pelvic, low back, and the hip. Right. And that usually takes care of a lot of people's discomfort. And then they find that they can go through their pregnancy much nicer, much easier. The delivery actually sometimes can improve as well because you can imagine if these bones are shifting around, okay, and th this is a, a picture of the pelvic floor muscles, mm -hmm. but this is basically where the baby comes out of. So if these bones are kind of shifted right. and they're not sitting correctly, then you actually don't have a really nice outlet for the baby to come out. Right. So sometimes improving that can actually make delivery a lot easier too. A lot too. more comfortable, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. a lot more comfortable. So those are just some of the things that we kind of work on for um, women. And you know, I want them to know that there is help out there and mm -hmm. you don't just need to rest and take Tylenol and modify your activities. There's actually a lot of things that you can do that's actually gonna help you even post delivery right. because now there's a higher demand on your body you have to take care of an infant along with other children maybe. Right, you might not be getting a whole lot of sleep. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so taking care of it early is right. actually a, a, a key to keep Well, and I, I would imagine like, like many things, I mean, you know, in an ideal world, you're gonna actually sort of train ahead of time and get into the yeah. best possible shape you can get into before yeah. getting pregnant, but that would be in an ideal world yeah. that we don't really live in most of the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so hopefully, you know, if, if women are having discomfort, especially, you know, prior to getting pregnant, <clears throat> during pregnancy, and even afterwards. And even after, as yep. everything's kind of rearranging back into place again. So. Yep, there's a lot of things that we can do. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually have a report that I recently put together. It's, it's called a Breakthrough Back Pain Report. Okay. And I, what we are doing is we, I created this because so many women asked us, is there simple things that we can do? Right. Um, that, you know, and not just women, but this is this is in general for anyone who's experiencing low back pain. Mm -hmm. But is there simple things that we can do to start helping ourselves? And so I kind of put this together and it's 17 tips that go through all the little small things that you can do to start preventing low back pain, or even if you're experiencing things you can do to modify simple things at home to start getting you out of discomfort. Right. Um, but of course, if you continue to have discomfort, you know, see a skilled physical therapist that understands how to treat um, pregnant women. And, and now uh, you actually know one. And now we actually know one. <laughs> so, you know, any anyone could call our office and mm -hmm. just, you know, tell us a little bit about what's going on. We want to make sure the report is right for them mm -hmm. and we can send it to them complimentary um, to start Fair. helping them. You're, you're a very helpful resource. So yes, if you are, 
pregnant, getting pregnant, thinking about getting pregnant, have already given birth, and you're having any of these back problems, obviously, why wouldn't you take advantage of some good quality free information? So reach out to Rebalance Physical Therapy. It's not just about your OBGYN. Remember that you know PT can play a big role in, in your comfort. Uh, get a copy of the free report after you know talking with uh, Hina or some of her staff. Great. Great having you back here on Thank Mainline you. Healthy Living. I'm certainly learning a lot. I hope you're <laughs> learning a lot along with us here. And we will be back with more great information from Hina Sheth and Rebalance Physical Therapy. Great.